Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the cardio tachogram. Now C stands for cardio, which is feel of heart rate, recording for the feel of heart rate, and T stands for toco, which are the uterine contractions, and G stands for graphic, so it's a graphical presentation of the uterine contractions and the feel of heart rate. So that's the definition. Now let's see here. So this is our fetus and our device. Now let's apply our electrodes. There are two methods for applying the electrodes, either external CDG, which is usually used. And here uh, we will apply an electrode on the abdomen facing the fundus for measuring the uterine contractions. And this is called the tocodynamometer, this electrode. And we have other electrode we applied in the area between the umbilicus and the right iliac fossa for measuring the fetal heart rate, which is an ultrasound transducer. It could be either computerized. So upward here you can see this is the fetal heart rate. And downward the uterine contractions. Or it could be on a graph or a paper. So this is regarding the external method. Now we have the internal CDG. And here also we apply two electrodes. One is called intrauterine pressure catheter for measuring the uterine contractions. It will be transvaginal. The other electrode on the scalp of the fetus for measuring the fetal heart rate. So one electrode on the scalp for measuring fetal heart rate and the other one on the uterus for measuring the uterine contractions. Now uh, the one for measuring the fetal heart rate is called fetal scalp electrode or spiral electrode and the other one is the intrauterine pressure catheter and also here we have the fetal heart rate and the uterine contractions now the internal method uh, it's used only after rupture of the membrane whether it was spontaneous or induced and it's used when closer surveillance is needed now, here this is just a framework about the fetal heart rate pattern. We have something called baseline changes, which are recording for 10 minutes, or the fetal heart rate for 10 minutes. This is a baseline change. Oh, this is a baseline, actually. And we have something called periodic changes, which are changes occurring uh, in a less than two minutes. on average 15 to 20 seconds. Now, on the baseline changes, we have the rate, the normal heart rate of fetus is 110 to 160 beats per minute. And we have something called the variability. We have short term and long term. We're gonna talk about it later. And in the periodic changes, we have accelerations, which is the fetal heart rate going upward for a little amount of time and the deceleration fetal heart rate going downward. Now let's start with the baseline changes. Of course it's a recording of 10 minutes, the heart rate for 10 minutes. Now the normal heart rate of a fetus is 110, 160 as I mentioned before. So this is the normal heart rate. Now if there is a fetal heart rate above 160 we call this baseline tachycardia. Now the causes for baseline tachycardia could be maternal or fetal. Now the maternal causes uh, all the causes for hyperdynamic circulation like fever, like uh, maternal hemorrhage, like even drugs. And the fetal causes chorioamnionitis and there is 
also other causes like maternal hyperthyroidism and many others. And if the heart rate is below 110, this is fetal bradycardia, baseline bradycardia. Now the causes could be also maternal or fetal causes. Now the maternal causes we have maternal hypothyroidism. We have uh, a mother is on beta blockers or opioids and many others like maternal uh, hypotension and there is many other causes and fetal causes like congenital heart block so these are causes for baseline bradycardia now let's talk about variability now the definition of variability is a fluctuation in the baseline fetal heart rate uh, which is irregular in amplitude and in frequency so this is variability these fluctuations it's not a straight line this is a short term variability and this is a long term variability now uh, variability is caused by alternate stimulation of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system of course the fetus is premature um, the, the central nervous system is not built up like the adults. Now the fluctuations normally is less than 20 beats per minute on average. And now the periodic changes. We have the accelerations. Now the accelerations are increased on the fetal heart rate by 15 to 30 beats per minute which lasts for 15 to 30 seconds this is the accelerations now the causes for accelerations are we have fetal movement just like you are doing an exercise so your heart rate will go up and we have acoustic stimulation which you apply noise on the room so the fetus will have an accelerations increase in heart rate, in heart rate. And we have also scalp stimulation. Now accelerations are a positive, is a marker of a positive fetal well-being. I mean the fetus is good. It's not something bad, not something to worry about. Now we have the decelerations. Now the deceleration is a decrease in the fetal heart rate by 15 to 30 beats per minute which lasts for 15 to 30 seconds on average. Oh. Now we have three types of decelerations. We have early, late and variable decelerations. We will start with the early deceleration. Now the early deceleration uh, occurs during labor. It's an indicator of a progression of labor. It's caused by the head compression, by the uterine contractions. So when there is a head compression, there will be a vagal discharge, vagal stimulation. Now the vagal stimulation will go the vagus will affect the heart by decreasing the fetal heart rate so it will lead into deceleration so the early deceleration occurs when the head is on the pelvic and there is head compression and it's a marker for progression of labor but examination should be done before start pushing because it may be an indicator for other things so uh, early deceleration it may be an indicator of cephalopelvic disproportion or macrocephaly 
so that's why examination should be done now on CTG we have this is the fetal heart rate and this is the uterine contraction downward whenever there are a uterine contraction there will be a deceleration just facing it the peak of the uh, the fetal heart rate is facing the peak of the uterine contraction on the paper so that that's why they say it's a mirror image of the uterine contraction the fetal heart rate and now we want to talk about the late deceleration now the late deceleration the causes are placental insufficiency which occurs in a mother with diabetes mother with hypertension a smoker mother or post date because the placenta is getting old and placental abruption we have also maternal hypotension and maternal hypoxia or a forceful uterine contraction these are the causes of the late deceleration now you can see here all of these causes will lead to low oxygen perfusion to the fetus what happens when there is a low oxygen perfusion to the fetus now low oxygen and nutrients will lead into anaerobic metabolism leading into accumulation of the lactic acid which means acidosis which leads into CNS and cardiovascular depression now let's see it from another perspective so we have so here we have this is the vagus nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve and they are taking signals from the chemoreceptors in the aortic and the carotid bodies now these fetus have low oxygen perfusion leading to stimulation of the chemoreceptors eventually leading into vasoconstriction in the non-vital organs and vasodilatation in the vital ones the vital organs are the brain, the heart, the kidneys, and the adrenal glands. And this, uh, if there is a high blood perfusion going to the brain, means the carotid artery will be stretched, which will lead into vagal stimulation and decreasing in the heart rate. So, when there is head compression during labor, now, the CNS will be busy dealing with all these reflexes, the chemoreceptors and the baroreceptors, so there will be a slow reaction to the mechanical stimulation of the head compression. Now, let's see what happens on the CTG. Now, on the paper we have this is the uterine contractions and the fetal heart rate so you can see here the decelerations occur after the uterine contractions and this is why they call it late deceleration now the management if you find a late deceleration you should reposition the patient to the left side and you should give a relaxing agent because forceful uterine contractions are a cause for late deceleration like terbutaline and if it progresses you should do a caesarean section and now the last one is the variable deceleration it's the most severe one is caused by cord compression the only cause is cord compression now uh, there is a repeated stimulation 
of the chemo and baroreceptors, there is no nutrients, there is no oxygen going to the fetus, it's more severe than the causes of the, of the late desalivation. And on the paper, there will be no relation between the uterine contractions and the desalivations. So the desalivations occurs at any time. You can see it here. This is the uterine contractions and this is the heart rate. So you can see this is one deceleration, two, three, four. So you can see one occurs before the uterine contractions, one after it. It has no relation. And we have now something called sinusoidal rhythm. It indicates fetal anemia. And on the CDG paper, this is the uterine contractions, and the fetal heart rate will be like this. And this is for reasons I can't explain. If you have an explanation, you can leave it in the comment section below. But I don't have an explanation for that. So, uh, this is the variability. You can see this is a short term variability, and this is a long term. And this one, I think this is an acceleration, and these are a short, uh, sorry, long term variability. Now, on this one, you can see this is the uterine contractions. And this is the fetal heart rate going into deceleration. You can see the peak of the deceleration is facing the peak of the uterine contractions. And this is a mirror image of the uterine contraction, the fetal heart rate. So this is an early deceleration. And on this one, this is the uterine contraction. And you can see the deceleration coming after the uterine contraction it's a u-shape shallow decelerations this is a characteristic of a late deceleration and on this one this is a variable deceleration you can see there is a deceleration before the uterine contraction there is a deceleration after the uterine contraction there, there are no relation between the uterine contractions and the deceleration. So this is a variable deceleration, which indicates there is a cord compression here on this field. And this is the final one. You can see here. This way, these waves. So this is a sinusoidal rhythm, which indicates fetal anemia. So this is all about the CDG. Thanks, guys, for watching, and see you soon.